If you've been wanting to travel to Iceland someday, you're definitely not alone. Nearly 2 million people visited Iceland for tourism in 2019. However, in these days of the coronavirus pandemic, traveling is a little bit more complicated than it was before, and Iceland is no exception. The questions you probably have now aren't just what is there to see and do there, but how do you actually get in? Can you get in? And those are the questions I'm going to answer for you in this video. Who can travel to Iceland right now? What the entry requirements are to get in? And of course, if you have to quarantine and for how long? Let's go. If you're new here, my name is Kristen. I own an online international relocation company and I've been to more than 60 countries in the past 20 years. On this channel, you'll find a lot of travel related videos from vlogs to coronavirus travel updates and more than 300 videos that will help you travel or live abroad while working remotely. If you're interested in some of my Iceland travel tips, you can check out this playlist right here. But in this video, let's jump right into what you need to go there. Iceland is a pretty good place to post up during a pandemic. And that is because of the country's super low population. There are only 356,000 locals with a population density of only three people per square kilometer. And if you've been to Iceland before, you know that you can sometimes go for miles without seeing another soul. So in other words, it's a pretty good place to socially distance yourself. And since tourism has plummeted about 79% since the pandemic, you can go to Iceland, keep yourself safe and socially distant, and also contribute to the country's local economy. Who can travel there? So Iceland is a country that is part of the European Union as well as the EU Schengen zone. So right now they are currently abiding by the European Commission's recommendations on only allowing other EU countries in for tourism and also a handful of other exceptions. So that's all countries in the EU plus other countries like the UK, Monaco, Andorra, and the Vatican, and also San Marino. There's also a really short list of third country nationals that are allowed in, and this includes people from Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Rwanda, Singapore, South Korea, Thailand, and Uruguay. So unfortunately, if you're not from Europe or one of those countries, if you're from the US or if you're from Canada or pretty much anywhere else in the world, as of the end of 2020, you cannot travel to Iceland unless it's for an essential travel reason or you are one of a list of exceptions, such as someone with a permanent residency or a work permit, family members there, or a romantic partner there. So if you're watching this video after 2020, then check the comments because I will post updates there as they come available. However, don't feel bad if you're not from one of those countries because I have really good news. And that is that in late October, the Icelandic government announced plans for a long stay visa for remote workers and digital nomads, including restricted countries that can't travel to Europe. So if you're interested in finding out how you can live and work from Iceland for up to six months, then check out my other video on Iceland's remote work permit over here. Okay, so once you've determined that there is a pretty good chance that you can get into Iceland, you're going to need to do two things. The first thing is to fill out their online health declaration form within 72 hours prior to arrival in the country. 
all travelers are required to fill out this form and it's just gonna ask for some basic information like your contact info, where you plan on quarantining, which we're gonna talk about in a second. And then also transiting passengers don't need to fill out this form and neither do children who are born after 2005. So after you have filled out that health declaration, you will need to verify your cell phone number and download Iceland's COVID-19 tracking app, which you can get at covid.is slash app. That app is gonna be one of your best friends for the next few days or weeks, which we'll talk about in a second. And a third thing that I recommend that is not required in the case of touristic travel to Iceland, but that everyone should have, is some sort of international travel and medical insurance policy. I've been traveling full time since I was 20 years old and I have always had full annual coverage and I can assure you I've used it many times. So you can get the links to the companies that I've been using the past few years in this video's description. Another thing you might be wondering is how can you guarantee that you can get into Iceland? And unfortunately, the government has said that there basically are no guarantees. So if you're not on that list of approved countries, then you're going to take a risk by traveling there because they can't say in advance, they can't confirm or deny if you'll be able to cross the border once you get off the plane. And they've also said that that decision ultimately rests with the immigration officials at the airport. So. If you are prepared to take on that risk, you will next need to mentally prepare yourself for quarantining. Now you have two options when it comes to quarantining. You can take the no COVID test route or the testing route. And if you decline to test for COVID, then you will need to quarantine for 14 days. However, there is a shorter option with a double testing system where you can test once on arrival, quarantine for five or six days to wait for your results, and then take a second test. And then journey off into the sunset of glaciers and ice or whatever it is that you're doing there. So I'm sure a lot of people will opt for the shorter quarantine route, but either way, once you arrive in Iceland, after you get through the airport and the checkpoint, you'll need to go directly to your quarantine destination. And the government hasn't specified where you can or can't quarantine. So it seems like you can quarantine at any sort of a guest house or hotel or private Airbnb. But once you get to that destination, there are quite a few rules for what you can and can't do once you're there. More things that you can't do. Under quarantine in Iceland, you cannot do much of anything. You can't go shopping even to essential stores like supermarkets or pharmacies. You can't go to work or school. You can't visit tourist attractions. You can't take public transportation and you can't travel long distances between towns. So you might be thinking, what can you do? Well, you can stay home and stay safe. You can work from home if you'd like. You can order delivery services. So you probably wanna stay in Reykjavik or one of the bigger cities, <laughs> cities in Iceland because there's not delivery and those types of services available everywhere. It's only in the bigger towns, but you can stay home, you can go for a walk, you can drive in a private car or in a rental car, but again, you can't take public transportation. So once you've gotten through your quarantine, you are free to explore. The good news about the COVID testing is that it's free, at least between December 1st of 2020 and January 31st of 2021. So hopefully the government will extend that policy, but even if they don't, it was only costing between 65 and $80 prior to that time. So not a huge investment if you're planning on going to Iceland, which is a pretty expensive country to visit. So the question remains, is it worth it to jump through all of these hoops to be able to visit Iceland? And I think that that answer depends on how long you are planning to stay there. 
If you think that you'll just be going for one week or a two week holiday, then it's probably better to wait until there are less stringent requirements. But if you have flexibility and you can see yourself going to Iceland for one month or three months or six months, then you'll wanna check out my other video on how you can qualify for their new remote work permit because this is the first time that Iceland has ever offered anything like this before the longest you could ever stay there was 90 days and now that's doubled to 180 days and will probably be extended again. So if you see yourself living and working from Iceland for the foreseeable future, definitely check that out. And before you leave, make sure to give this video a thumbs up Subscribe for more travel guides and updates and see you in the next video.